Hello everybody, Prime Raptor, Prime Raptor today. We're going to interview on the NECA Prometheus Trilobite vs. Battle Scarred Engineer action figure set. And this is a really, really great set. I'm just going to say out the gate. Bit old, but not about the set. But this review is the start of Prometheus week. So, from today to Sunday, I'm going to be reviewing just Prometheus stuff. Uh, mostly NECA figures, but I, if I don't have anything else to review by the end of the week, then I might throw in something else, Prometheus. But, anyway, this set is really awesome. Now, it's a very old set. Well, old by a couple of years. Uh, this came out back in 2012, and I picked mine up off of Amazon. Now, I actually got one initially when the movie first came out, but I sold it off a while ago, so I decided to pick it up again. I bought, an, I bought another one off Amazon back in June for a fairly good price, but I'll get into price at the end of the video. But anyway, this figure's great. Let's get into what makes them so great. Let's get into the accessories. So the only accessory you get is this. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. There's no denying this. This is super phallic. This is just a penis. Just completely and utterly. Just... Yeah. And the detail's not even the greatest on this. It's just kind of like a pinkish paint with some white. Or some, not some white like some beiges over it and see where the wire is because uh, this is on a bendy wire um yeah i get it this is supposed to be like the tube that the trail bite sticks down the engineer's throat to implant the deacon egg but god this is so gross but anyway uh you can see this little peg here that just pegs into here on the trail bite right there all that and, yeah, uh, pretty minimal detail, the only accessory you got really, and, yep, but that's about it for the little proboscis tube thing. So the first figure you get in the set is the Battle Scarred Engineer, and I love this figure. He's awesome. Now, I do not have the Engineer from Series 1, nor do I have the Pressure Suit Engineer, uh, the pressure suit and the chair suit engineers from series one. So this one and the holographic chair suit or pressure suit engineer are the only engineer figures I own. And I love this one. He's so awesome. Just the anger and just that screaming face like he's in pain. It's just great for a display. Really like this. But for the sculpt on his head, it's very, very nice. Starting with the non-damaged side or what I would consider non-damaged side. You can see it's very nice. His eyes really well detailed. And you can see it's got some nice red around the eyes. Very, very nice. You can see the ears look very, very nice. The head is a nice kind of translucent ish plastic. Come around to the back. It's very nice. You can see up here where the kind of normal head fades into the burnt, scarred face. And in some scenes, you really can't see this burnt, scarred face, but in others, you can see it more prominent. But very nice. You can see he's, like, screaming in pain, which is really awesome. It's just so well detailed. You got all the detail in there, like, the tongue and the teeth are so nicely sculpted. It's just unbelievable. You can see it's all glossy in there. On um, the side of his face that's burnt, you can see it's all charred. It's all, like, sculpted to be all charred and gross. And then you can see his eye in there. See, it's different than his other one. And then the charred kind of body comes down to here on this weird like rib cage. And it goes down his neck, as you can see. And then it goes on his shoulder a bit here. And you can see it's a little bit black here, but there's no sculpt on like some, somewhere like here or here. And then on his armor itself is very nice, very biomechanically. His neck looks really weird. He's got all these little vents, I guess you could call them. And then the back, very, very nice biomechanically detailed. You can even see he's got some, like, engineer writing on his back, which is very well done. And you come down here, more tubes and vents and stuff. And then flipping him around, more of that detail. It's very, very nice. It's weird because his, like, skin is melded with the suit, which is kind of funny to me. And I do believe in the theory that... There are two factions of engineers. One is the one that are the creators and one of the destroyers. So, yeah. And very, very nice detail. You can see his kind of dark gray suit comes down to his more white hands. You can see his hands are like clenched and you got like the veins popping out, which looks very, very, 
very, very, very nice, which I really actually really like that. Both hands are pretty much the same. And down here on his legs, she got more engineer writing. You can see he's got more of these weird holes and like tubes on his legs. And down here, you can see his thighs. More of that nice detail. His feet are like weird, like I don't know what you would want to call this. Kind of shoes, I guess. But as I said earlier, the suit is kind of melded to the skin, so I guess those would kind of be his feet. Very, very nice detail overall. I really like this engineer figure. And I think he's better than the Series 1 Engineer, although I do not own that figure. Or I, I had it for a period of time when it first came out, but I sold it off. So, yeah. Very, very nice. I really like this figure, and that's about it for sculpts on the Engineer. Now, moving on to articulation. So, for articulation, this is a bit of an old figure, but he does have a good amount of articulation. Enough to hold up with today's figures. He's got a ball joint at the head. His arm can go out that far. It can move 360. He's got a bend at the elbow, as well as a swivel. Um, you can see the arm kind of popped out there. Uh, ball joint at the wrist. The waist is on a ball joint. Or, yeah, the torso. The leg has kind of a weird joint where it can only go out... Um, it actually can only go out that far and go in. But if you move the joint around, you can get the leg to go forward and go backward so it's really just a maneuvering game but he's got a bend at the knee as well as a ball joint at the foot and that's about it for articulation on the battle scarred engineer so the next figure you get in this set and i would even i wouldn't even call it a figure i'd call it more of a deluxe is the trilobite and just looking at the body itself you can tell it's a very small body but when you get all the legs like furled out you can see he's a very large figure i mean he's a long long figure and he's really really nice like he takes up my entire shelf with all from uh tentacle tip to tentacle tip he takes up my entire um he takes up one of my entire smaller shelves which is pretty impressive but for the torso uh, i guess what you call the torso you can see it's got some weird like vents and like or like lung i guess I guess nostrils, maybe, I guess you could call what these, maybe this as well. But you can see it kind of looks like a spine coming down there, but oh, these are these two little, I don't know, what do you would want to call these? Like these little things right here. Very, very nice detail. You can see it kind of comes up to a ridge and then comes down. Spin it around so you can see that. He's got all these little petals right here, which also look really phallic and he's got all these like little tiny rubbery tentacles and i really don't like these i wish they just didn't include them because they just get in the way and i don't like them and i guess if you really wanted to you could cut these off but if i move those out of the way you can see like the mouth in there with all the teeth and that looks really gross and you see there's a hole there where you can plug in the uh the little tube and you can see all his tentacles have some kind of more of that fleshy detail that continues from each petal. You can see that right there, right there. And then his tentacles all look very nice. You can see they've all got like little tiny vents on them, which is weird. And then they're all different pretty much. And you can see they come out to these little claw tips. And then this one comes out to a different claw tip than a normal one. Like you can see that, what's the difference? Uh, like a little tail. Well, I guess I'm, I'm assuming this is the tail. Uh, very nice detail. You can see they're ridged right there. Very, very nice. It's very just hard to get this on camera because it's such a big figure. But very, very nice. I really like this. And this is definitely one of my favorite figures in my collection. That's about it for Sculpt on Trilobite. Now moving on to articulation. So for articulation, he's got a ball joint at each individual tentacle. Uh, sometimes the tentacles may pop off, but most of the time they'll stay on pretty pretty well and basically each tentacle is on a bendy wire so you can pretty much bend it any way you want I like to have the tentacles completely unfurled because once you do that then you can it just gives you a scale of how big this creature is see you can bend the tentacles every which way you want and that's pretty much about it for articulation on this figure so a very minimal amount, but with that minimal amount, you can get a lot of poses, mostly just due to the bendy wires in the ball joints. But 
That's about it for articulation on the trailer blade. So here I have the engineer next to the predator from the 30th anniversary wave. Fire and stone, anyone? And here he is next to the xenomorph from the two pack, from the Hadley's Hope two pack. And you can see the engineer is a little bit smaller than the xenomorph, but still stands about the same height. And here he is next to the neomorph. And lastly, for the engineer, here he is next to the deacon and David. Reviews for these two coming soon. And for the trilobite, here he is next to the covenant xeno. And here's the trilobite next to Fifield and Shaw. And here's the trilobite next to Dutch because Shaw was a smaller human, so this is just so you can get some scale with a more average sized human figure. So overall, this is a definite recommend for me. And it's not even that expensive on eBay, or Amazon for that matter. I mean, most of the figures from Prometheus after Covenant came out, they skyrocketed in price. David went from 25 to 100, the Deacon went from 70 to like 300, and most of the engineers went from like 12 bucks to 30 bucks. While this one stayed at a fairly dormant 50 bucks, and I'm sorry if you hear a drill going off in the background, they're doing work and it's outside my house and it's really pissing me off because I can't do a video for you guys without having the loud like drill noise, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, so yeah, this stayed at a pretty fair, a fairly good price of I think 40 bucks, something like that, and that's a very good deal. I mean, you get a massive trilobite, plus you get a well, really well done engineer figure. So I say it's a win-win, and you do get a lot of good stuff for what you're paying for. And with the new Fire and Stone Ahab figure coming out, I'm even happier to have this set because then I can get some nice pictures of Ahab fighting an engineer like he did in the comic. So, yeah, I definitely recommend this set. Definitely recommend you pick it up. This is a great set. I will see you tomorrow with my next review. Let me guys, let me know in the comments below what you want me to review next, whether you want me to review The Deacon, Sean Fifield, Meredith Vickers, or the Holographic Engineer, you tell me in the comments below. Please subscribe, like, comment, and bye bye